Oi Clark was born on April 15, 1933, in Meharon, Virginia, as one of five children to Hester Linwood Clark and Lillian Clark, Oliver. His father worked as a tobacco farmer. During the Great Depression, the family split time between Meharon and New York City, where his father moved them for work. When Roy was 11, the family settled in Washington, D.C., after his father secured a job at the Washington Navy Yard. Clark's father was a semi-professional musician, skilled in banjo, fiddle, and guitar, while his mother played the piano. Roy's first instrument was a makeshift cigar box with a ukulele neck, which he discovered in elementary school. By age 14, his father had taught him the guitar, and Roy soon added banjo and mandolin to his repertoire. Reflecting on his early years, Roy said, Guitar was my real love. I was certainly influenced by others, especially George Barnes, whose swing style and tone I admired. Growing up in Washington, D.C., Clark was surrounded by talented musicians. He would absorb their techniques, joking that many would cringe when they saw him coming to steal their licks. He cited Earl Scruggs as a major influence on his banjo style. By age 15, Clark had already won the National Banjo Championship twice, in 1947 and 1948, and even toured briefly with a band. Shy by nature, Clark often used humor to cope with social challenges, especially when country-western music was mocked by his peers. Humor also became part of his performances, and it wasn't until the mid-1960s that he gained the confidence to perform without relying on comedy. In the D.C. area, country-western music venues were popular, and Clark made his public performance debut with lead guitarist Carl Lukat in a duet act. At 16, Clark made his television debut on Washington's WTTG, and a year later, at 17, he appeared on the Grand Ole Opry after winning his second national banjo title. He soon expanded his skills to include the fiddle and 12-string guitar. For 18 months, he toured the country, backing up notable acts like David Stringbean Aikerman, Lonzo and Oscar, and others, earning $150 a week around $1,900 today. In his early 20s, Clark began flying planes, earning his pilot's certificate at 23. His first plane was a 1953 Piper Tri-Pacer, which he flew for years and later raffled off for charity. Over the years, he owned several other aircraft, including a Mitsubishi Mu-2, Steerman PT-17, and a Mitsubishi MU-300 Diamond 1A business jet. In 1954, rising country music star Jimmy Dean invited Roy Clark to join his band, the Texas Wildcats, where Clark took on the role of lead guitarist. He regularly appeared on Dean's Town and Country Time show, which aired first on WARLAM and later on WMAL-TV when it transitioned from radio to television in 1955. In 1956, Clark competed on Arthur Godfrey's Talent Scouts, his first national TV appearance, finishing as the runner-up. However, his persistent lateness led Dean to fire him in 1957, marking the end of Clark's time in Washington, D.C., a place he never called home again. Reflecting on his time there, Clark mentioned he never set out to be a country guitarist, but simply played what felt good, without aiming for a recording or television career. By 1959, Clark became a regular on George Hamilton IV's TV series in Washington, D.C., in 1960, he moved to Las Vegas and played guitar for Hank Penny's band. Around the same time, he also performed with Wanda Jackson's band, The Party Timers, during her rockabilly phase. In early 1960, while Jimmy Dean guest-hosted The Tonight Show, he invited Clark to perform on the final night, giving him national exposure. Clark later made his solo debut on the same show in January 1963. 
He went on to appear on popular TV shows like The Beverly Hillbillies, where he played both Roy Halsey and his mother Myrtle, and The Jackie Gleason Show, performing a fiery rendition of Down Home. He also appeared on The Odd Couple, performing Malaganya. In the mid-1960s, Clark co-hosted the NBC daytime country variety show Swingin' Country, alongside Molly B. and Rusty Draper, though it was canceled after two seasons. His career skyrocketed when he and Buck Owens co-hosted Hee Haw, a comedy sketch show that ran from 1969 to 1997, bringing Clark widespread fame. During the show's run, he was a member of the Million Dollar Band and frequently featured in its comedic sketches. In 1976, he performed with Arthur Fiedler and the Boston Pops Orchestra in Evening at Pops. In 1983, Clark opened the Roy Clark Celebrity Theater in Branson, Missouri, becoming the first major entertainer to permanently establish a venue in the growing resort town. Throughout the 1980s and 1990s, he performed regularly in Branson, though he sold the venue in 1992, after which it was renamed the Hughes American Family Theater. He continued to tour lightly and performed annually with Ramona Jones and the Jones Family Band in tribute to his Hee Haw co-star, Grandpa Jones, in Mountain View, Arkansas. On July 4, 1984, Clark played to a massive crowd of over 500,000 fans in Washington, D.C., alongside acts like Ringo Starr, The Beach Boys, Three Dog Night, George Jones, and B.J. Thomas. In 1954, Roy Clark married Ruby Conley, and they had one son, Roy Linwood Clark Jr. However, the couple divorced in 1957. Later that same year, on August 31st, Roy wed Barbara Joyce Rupert. They stayed together until Roy's death in 2018. The couple raised five children and settled in Tulsa, Oklahoma. In 1978, Roy was honored when a local elementary school was named after him. Clark passed away on November 15, 2018 at the age of 85 at his home in Tulsa due to complications from pneumonia.